Immortality. Will we ever achieve it? There are two types of immortality. Biological immortality and virtual immortality. Biological immortality is when we continue to maintain our physical bodies and there are a number of organizations and foundations dedicated to researching anti-aging. Aging is the lifelong accumulation of damage to cells and DNA that occur as a natural byproduct of the human body's normal function. In order to combat and prevent the diseases associated with aging, the proposition is to embark on a program of periodic comprehensive maintenance on the body, much like how you would maintain a vintage car. Aging results in numerous diseases, which have various different causes. The hope is that as the future unfolds, improved medical knowledge and advances in technology will allow us to upkeep and maintain our bodies, granting significant life extension, if not immortality. The maintenance will consist of replacing lost cells and cells which are no longer dividing properly, removing harmful material buildup and damaged cells, repairing damaged cells, and breaking the link between damage and the onset of a disease as a result of that damage. This is a simplified breakdown, and some examples of the treatments and therapies that will be used to maintain our bodies are immunotherapy, tissue engineering, stem cell therapy and the personalised treatment of cancers. There are a few encouraging success stories that point toward the future of medicine. After a young woman suffered damage to her trachea, doctors created a 3D model of her windpipe and used her stem cells to grow a replacement trachea that was then successfully transplanted into the woman. Dr Aubrey de Grey, who is the chief science officer at one of the most prestigious anti-aging research foundations, SENS Research Foundation, estimates that there is a 50% chance that after 20 to 25 years, we may be able to extend the human lifespan by 30 additional years. This is assuming that technology and medical research continues to advance at an exponential rate. However, he cautions that there is still a 10% chance that we won't even get to that stage until 100 years into the future. Google too have ventured into the anti-aging business. They have created Calico, a company dedicated to fighting aging and its associated diseases. Once effective therapies and treatments are created, the anti-aging industry is expected to become a large and lucrative industry. And this is why forward-thinking companies are looking to invest early. Ray Kurzweil, a respected scientist and futurist who is Director of Engineering at Google, also shares an optimistic view of the future. He has outlined his theory of the law of accelerating returns, which predicts that owing to the rate of exponential technological growth, immortality will be within reach in the next 30 years. He explains that through the use of nanotechnology, humans will be able to halt and even reverse the aging process. Nanobots will replace our blood cells doing the work of blood cells but with better efficiency and results, and damaged biological organs will be replaced with artificial organs. In addition to all of that, he predicts humans will use technology to augment capabilities in order to become superhuman. Even more ambitious plans for the future is the plan to transfer or upload the human brain and consciousness into an avatar at the end of biological life. Eccentric Russian billionaire Dmitry Itzkov has set up the non-profit organization 2045 initiative with that aim in mind. Mind uploading can potentially be done in two different ways. One, by gradually transferring the biological brain, neuron by neuron, into an avatar and replacing the missing neurons in the biological body with transistors, so that by the end of the process, the avatar will house the human brain and the biological body will house an artificial brain, or two, by scanning and mapping the biological brain, then copying and transferring the information onto a computational device or system. The 2045 initiative has outlined their plan toward immortality, with the first attempt to transplant a biological human brain into an avatar, scheduled for 2025, and then for the first attempt to upload an artificially copied brain into an avatar scheduled to happen around 2035.
If these methods of creating virtual immortality come to fruition, it will open up the question of what and who is the individual. Will these avatars be a progression of the original life, or will they be copies? So far, we have discussed uploading information, but what about downloading information? If all human knowledge and information were uploaded into a giant database and organized into downloadable programs, Theoretically, any human or avatar would be able to directly connect with the system and download any program they require. In a matter of minutes, any entity could attain the skills of a concert pianist or learn how to speak all the known languages. Everything discussed so far is based on the assumption that technology will continue to advance exponentially. It was in 1965 that Intel co founder Gordon Moore observed that computer power was doubling approximately every two years. Some experts believe that as the trend continues, we are coming closer and closer to reaching technological singularity. The technological singularity is a hypothetical scenario where the pace of technological advancement outstrips a human intellectual capacity and control. Computers will continue to create newer and better computers, and ultimately they will be able to think independently. This will be a turning point in human evolution and our civilization as we know it will be changed beyond all recognition. We've strayed into the heights of imagination, but let's bring things back to the more immediate and look at some of the concerns raised when speaking about a post-aging world. We'll be discussing overpopulation and resource scarcity, inequality of access to anti-aging and rejuvenation therapies and treatments, the cost of an aging population, the collapse of pensions, etc., youth unemployment, and boredom. In a post aging world, people worry about overpopulation. Projections estimate that by 2050, the global population will rise to 9.6 billion, and by 2100, it will rise to about 10.9 billion. Thereafter, it is predicted that things will begin to level off. In a post-aging world, it may be necessary to bring in some measures to calibrate population growth. But at the same time, if women are able to prolong their fertility over a longer period of time, they may opt to reproduce much later in life. There are approximately 150,000 deaths and 350,000 births a day, which means the population grows by 200,000 a day. Of those 150,000 deaths, two-thirds, that is 100,000, are caused by age-related diseases. If those deaths could be prevented and the daily birth rate was halved, we would have 50,000 deaths and 175,000 births a day, resulting in a population growth of 125,000 a day, which is a much slower rate of global population growth than what is currently happening today. However, we must remember that it's actually very hard to make projections so far into the future, especially when technology advancement and the social changes that result are expected to be rapid, radical and not wholly predictable. If we stick with the assumption that the world's population rises to 10.9 billion as projected, will our world have enough resources to support the global population? Well, it will be a challenge. The world has a finite amount of water, land and fossil fuels. Burning fossil fuels for energy releases large volumes of CO2, which damages the environment and is the cause of man-made climate change. Alternative clean and renewable energy sources must be developed. The richer countries must lower their consumption as they remain responsible for the bulk of the world's resource consumption. The United States, for example, has less than 5% of the global population but uses about 25% of the world's fossil fuel resources. Countries with large populations such as China and India must also focus on managing their consumption. To feed a population of almost 11 billion, the world will need to double food production. This won't be easy, as land that can be given over to agriculture has already been given over to agriculture. We need to increase productivity and efficiency of agriculture, reduce waste and adapt our diets. It is the same story with water. By wasting less, polluting less, reusing more and becoming more efficient, we can reduce water stress.
If new anti-aging and rejuvenation therapies make biological immortality within reach, one concern is that such therapies and treatments will only be made available to the rich. In answer to that, Dr. Aubrey de Grey hopes that the anti-aging industry will be so profitable that the cost of production of the therapies and treatments will be low enough that they can be made widely available. He also hopes that rather than viewing life extension as a luxury, it will come to be regarded as a human right that is required to be made equally accessible to all. This is an optimistic outlook given the inequality of access to present-day medical treatment. However, it would be the ideal scenario if all the world's population were able to benefit equally from anti-aging treatments and therapies. Aging populations are expensive, but they are expensive owing to the physical and mental decline associated with age. Older people can no longer work, they require expensive medical care, and the longer people survive, the more stress there is on pensions. However, the anti-aging proposition is that older people do not get frail and sick and therefore they will continue to produce wealth for their economies rather than draining funds. In a post-aging society, older people could hold on to their jobs for hundreds of years and younger people may find it more and more difficult to gain employment. In the future, as technology advances, more and more new industries and jobs may evolve, which will supply the demand for employment. In addition, people may be incentivized to retire after a certain period of time and pursue an alternative career. With hundreds of years stretching before us, some wonder if we will become bored. Ray Kurzweil predicts that along with life extension will come life expansion, meaning that our computer technology will create hundreds of alternative realities for us to explore, which will keep us occupied and our minds engaged. If there comes a time when an individual wishes to die, then there will be the option of no longer continuing to extend life. There is an enormous amount of speculation and projection when it comes to answering whether humans will ever become immortal. It is something that is actively being pursued by some scientists. And with advancement in technology, we could get closer to the possibility. But we will need to wait and see. If you like my content and want to help me make more educational videos for YouTube, please consider becoming a supporter of London City Girl Knowledge on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding platform where you can support your favourite online creators by giving them a small sum of money each month. In return, you will get rewards such as graphics and wallpapers for your phone and computer, educational cheat sheets which you can print off and keep, as well as ebooks on a range of educational topics. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and for more informative and interesting videos, please support London City Girl by subscribing to this channel and turning on the notification bell so you always know when I have a new video out.